Bodie, California, a ghost town. That's what we'll be talking about today because that's what's on my calendar for May. Well, not the entire town of Bodie. It just has the church on there, and there was really no specific stories on the church, so I'm just covering all of Bodie. So here we go. So first, the history. So a man named William Bodie in 1859 came across the land itself and found some gold there, which is now called Bodie's Bluff. From that moment, Miners started coming over to look for gold, only Bodhi never really got a chance to see what the land itself turned into because that same year there was a big snowstorm and he didn't make it. That is why we know it as Bodhi, California. It was named after him, only a different spelling. The story is a painter that how do I say this without sounding mean? Wasn't very bright. Misspelled Bodhi on the sign for the city and spelt it the way we all know it as. They kept it because they didn't want any confusion of how to actually pronounce Bodhi. Because it was already on a sign, they just left it the way it is. But William Bodhi was spelled B-O-D-E-Y, which... I don't really know how they would get confused with the pronunciation of Bodhi with that spelling, but that's the story behind that. And so slowly after that year, it became really popular. A lot of miners started settling there. A lot of different buildings were starting to be built, houses for them, bars. So it became really popular. It got a population of about 10,000 people at one point. But it wasn't always all that great. There are a lot of fights. There are a lot of deaths. There are a lot of bar fights which turned into deaths. Sadly, there were a lot of fires. And one of them in particular, when I came across, I was just like, oh, really? So there was Probably most tragic fires was set by a two and a half year old boy playing with matches. It burnt down about 95% of the buildings that were there. The ones that you can see now are pretty much the ones that were left standing at that time. It all stayed a mining town for a while. I think until about the 1940s, it really became what's called now a ghost town because that's when people really started to leave. And so now today, since we've kind of covered the history of it, there's something called the curse. So people can go through it. It is literally like going back in time. You can see it. Still the same as how when the state bought it back in night or took it over in 1962, they left it in what's called rested decay. So whenever something is breaking down, they fix it, but they fix it to model it kind of how it looked. They don't put brand new wood in there. They don't repaint it. They fix it and kind of make it look like that time period if that makes any sense. I don't know if that really makes any sense. But they keep it looking the way it was before it broke down. And so people can go there, and it has been known where people take things like pebbles or anything off the ground, sticks. It can be anything in that area. If they bring it home with them, if they take it, then the curse is that they get bad luck until they return it. And they actually have this like museum where there's letters of people that have returned things either by mail or brought them back personally where they keep record of who took what and why they returned it. And so now the ghost side of things. So there are three main houses that have what I would call residual hauntings 
So one of the houses, known as the Cane Home, back then there was a man who had an affair with one of his maids. She became kind of an outcast when everyone found out, and she is known to haunt there. She was of Chinese descent. People can feel that she doesn't like adults, but she loves children. And so if I was an adult, I would probably steer clear of that house and move on because, you know, the not liking adults part. But she has been seen looking through the window of that house. It's also been reported that people that sleep there, the ones who probably work there, sleep in the bedrooms and they feel someone sitting on the bed next to them which I could only guess is her. And there's also the Gregory house, which is haunted by a woman who no one really knows who she is. She just appeared there, but she is seen throughout the home and mostly sitting on a chair inside through a window, knitting something. And then the Mendocini house, which the whole family is guess to be there because they there's different times where people smell food being cooked they hear children giggling playing outside it seems like the mendicinis maybe never left there and they're all known to be a nice family so even though they're all still there they wouldn't bother you which I feel like with the fires may be a way of how the church actually became haunted, but not in the way that you think. I like to think it's probably residual hauntings. It's probably residual hauntings because in one of the fires, so there are actually two churches and one of them burnt down. The one that's on the calendar is actually the one that survived. And being the main church at that time, and so many tragic deaths around that area, there has to be a lot of residual hauntings. And then, what is a town without a cemetery? There's one girl that is there that has her own little statue of an angel on her gravestone. She is known as the Angel of Bodhi, and when she was three and a half, she was accidentally killed by a miner's pick. But she is still hanging around. There's been reports of, of a man going to the cemetery with his daughter, and his daughter would be playing and giggling with someone who isn't there. So could it be her? So those are just a few documented hauntings on Bodhi. And if you ever get the chance to go there, I would recommend it. It looks like you would step back in time. It's very well kept, very well taken care of. And it's kind of cool to step into some history. And of course, the mines, where the miners were, are haunted as well, but due to safety reasons, no one could really go in there, which is understandable. So that's the story of Bodhi. I decided to cover all of it just because, like I said in the beginning, there wasn't really anything focusing so much on the church itself. So I decided to kind of dive into everything that I could come up with from Bodhi, California. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time, and until then, stay strange, stay spooky. Bye!